Welcome, welcome, welcome to St. James Baptist Church. Hope you've had a wonderful week as we intend to worship God today. To our virtual audience, God bless you. Thank you for joining us today. Come on in and we're going to worship the Lord today. God bless you. wonderful to be in the house of the Lord one more time. He woke us up this morning. He got us started. He got us in this place so that we can worship and praise his name. Hallelujah. Let us rise on our feet. Give God one hand clap of praise this morning. May we pray. Father God, we come before you with thanksgiving in our hearts. God, we bless you, we magnify you, we glorify you, God, because you are God and you're God all by yourself. God, we ask that you mingle among us this morning, God. Fill this place with your presence, God. We pray, God, that everyone that walks through the door will have a blessing bestowed upon them because your Holy Spirit is resting in this place. God, we ask for healing this morning. We ask for salvation to show up this morning. We ask for restoration to show up this morning, God. We thank you, God, for your many blessings. God, we ask that you be with us. Guide us through this service, God. Pray for our pastor, God. We pray that you will touch his heart, touch his mind, God. Yes, God. That he will speak from Ohio, God. That you will give him a rhema word from heaven, God. That will help us get through this whole week, God. So that we can come back again and worship and praise your name again. God, we thank you. We praise you. We magnify you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. May we join with our choir singing, lift every voice and sing.
History Month wade in the water.
what you need Have faith indeed Just ask Just ask In my name Oh, just ask Just ask In my name All things are possible In my name I am able To do the impossible In my name In his name. 
wonderful choir another hand. They are blessing us this morning. Yes, God. We will now hear our announcements. Praise God. Good morning. Happy Black History and Heart Health Month. We hope that you enjoyed our low and impact exercise class on yesterday with Sister Diane Treadwell and Sister Jessica Fox. Following the service, the health ministry will be checking blood pressure in the fellowship hall. Wednesday, February 21st, starting at 7 p.m., for Lent service, Pastor Lee will be preaching at Equation Church. If you would like transportation, please reach out to the church office no later than this Tuesday, February 20th. Equation Church address is 901 Broad Avenue, Greensboro, North Carolina. Our intercessory prayer will be next Saturday, February 24th, starting at 9 a.m. On February 24th, from 12 noon until 2.30 p.m., the youth department will be taking ages 5 through 18 skating. For pricing and bus information, please contact Minister Tyrone Austin or call the church office. On next Sunday, February 25th, we will have guest preacher Dr. Boykin Sanders, a distinguished professor of New Testament studies and Greek and senior research scholar in religion and culture. And at 4 p.m. on February 25th, the Visual Arts Ministry will present We Are Somebody. Amen. We look forward to seeing you. Amen. DVDs are now available for the Mail Core Smackdown for $10. If you would like to purchase, please reach out to the church office or the media ministry. These are your announcements. Have a great day. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's give God praise on this morning. Amen. 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 It's truly Praise God for this privilege. God has blessed us to see another day's journey. And he has blessed us to make our way to the house of the Lord one more time. Those things he did not have to do. Amen. So again, let's praise God for another day's journey. And look at somebody tell them, man, I'm so glad about it. Amen. It did not have to be this way. Please uh, adhere to your announcements that were uh, in your hearing. I do want to highlight one or two things, and that is um, this coming Wednesday, for those uh, who can, you know, this is the beginning of our fast. Starting Wednesday past was um, Ash Wednesday. Each Wednesday night will be a, um, a um, Lenten service at various churches, and it will be my turn to preach on Wednesday night at Equation Church. Uh, for those who can make it, I pray that you can come out and be supportive of that. Uh, pastor Dion uh, Clark is the pastor uh, there. Also, uh, be, please be mindful of um, on uh, next Sunday, we ask that you, if you can, um, wear, um, this is Black History Month, but we ask that if you can, please wear some um, uh, kente clothing, African clothing, um, which represents our heritage. Uh, next week, um, Dr. Boykin Sanders, some of you have already met him and known him, is one of my professors that I had in New Testament. Um, very, very, very powerful man, very educated man. And uh, we pray that you would please come out next Sunday at 9 a.m. during the worship service. He will be our guest preacher. Amen. And uh, he is excited. Uh, he is the man for the job, particularly when it comes to black history. And we want to celebrate him and for him to be here next week to uh, be a blessing uh, to us. Uh, let me give you the heads up. How many of you could use a trip right about now? Okay, five people, that ain't bad. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Uh, how many of you could use a trip for $35? Okay, so that's a few more hands. Amen. Amen. Um, look, on first Sunday in April, uh, we have been invited and I have accepted uh, the engagement uh, to go to uh, Newport News, Virginia, my home church, Gethsemane Baptist Church. They will be celebrating their 40th church anniversary. Amen. Amen. 
And on that day, we have been invited to come and preach. Our choir is going to sing. It will be a three o'clock um, event and uh, there will be a bus trip. The bus will leave here about between 10 and 10, 15. We're, we're working out that time. And also, um, they're going to feed us uh, as well. And so, and then uh, the service, and then after the service, we'll head back to Greensboro. So it'll be a one day trip. Uh, for those persons who are interested, I pray that you all will be interested. Um, we have a 56-passenger bus uh, right now on hold. Amen. We've already given them our deposit. Amen. And so it would only cost, for those who want to go, it would only cost $35 for, for your seat. Now, for $35, this is what you get. You get to ride on a, a, on a bus that you don't have to drive. Amen. That's one thing. <laughs> Amen. That's what you'll get. You'll, you'll get a charter bus with a bathroom. <laughs> and uh, secondly, uh, you will get a, I guarantee you, you will get a nice meal, not a snack. Amen. You will get a meal. Amen. And then on top of that, you'll get a ride right back. Amen. <laughs> now you tell me where you can get that for $35. <laughs> it would take $35 just to fill half of your tank up. Amen. So please, uh, I want you to come and celebrate with me as we go to my home church, amen, uh, amen. and let's go and show them love and, uh, and let God just bless us and be a blessing to them. If you're interested, please call the church and, um, and give Denise your name, your monies as soon as possible because we are expecting 56 seats to uh, fill uh, up pretty quick, particularly with the choir is going as well. Amen. So please let the church, uh, call the church during this week if you can, give Denise your name. And also let me put this out there as a disclaimer, um, your $35 um, is uh, non-refundable. <laughs> we have to pay for the bus. Amen, look at somebody tell them, non-refundable. Non Amen, it's non-refundable. Amen. Look at it this way. If you can't go, amen, you have blessed somebody else to be able to go. That's, the, that's how I look at it. Amen. So please, let's just go and celebrate with them, and I will keep announcing this until the, buses, uh, the bus pretty much is full. At this time, Children's Church is dismissed uh, downstairs. Children's Church at this time uh, may be um, dismissed uh, down, uh, downstairs uh, as well. Let me mention one other thing, um, um, and, and, and please see Sister Frankie Lang for more details on this. Um, uh, we're having, uh, it's going to be, it's called a Senior Academy, um, sponsored by Gifford County, um, uh, Sheriff Rogers, and uh, it is a Senior Academy, and uh, there will be some classes going on. Uh, some of the topics include crime prevention and safety, fraud scams and identity theft. A lot of seniors right now are targets, amen. A lot of you, believe it or not, and they have some AI, have some stuff, they have some voices out here that sound just like mine or your loved one, amen, on the phone. You think you're talking to your son or your daughter, amen, asking for money and you faithfully do it or whatever it might be and you got scammed, amen. So fraud, scams, identity theft, um, senior health and fitness, healthy living and eating, and elder, uh, elderly abuse, neglect, and exploitation. Uh, these are just some of the um, things that will be mentioned. And you can register um, for uh, this information and be a part of this class. And uh, if, if you really want to know, you can call the church or to call contact. Uh, Sister Frankie Lane, who could really probably give you a whole lot more uh, information uh, on this. It is a six-week class, amen. amen. It's a certificate program, so a certificate will be given out at the completion uh, of the program. Again, it is sponsored by Sheriff uh, Gifford County, and it's called the Senior Academy. Amen. amen. We just want you to be up and aware of what's going on uh, around us or even on today. Amen. We bless God on today. Praise we give God. God all the glory and praise and honor Amen. that is due his name. Yes, 
one last thing, don't forget about next week for our virtual arts ministry at 4 p.m. We are somebody, yeah. amen, for our Black History Month. So please join us next Sunday uh, at 4 as well. We want to take this time to welcome our guests. For those who may be worshiping with us or watching uh, virtually for the first time, if you are a guest, please stand. We want to acknowledge Praise you this God. morning. We want to greet you with a lovely greeting. Praise amen. God. Please remain standing. Amen. Someone is going to, uh, someone is going to uh, bless you at this time with a guest packet. Amen. 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 As you receive the guest pack, we ask that you would please fill that, fill it out, and give us information about you. And please leave that with the ushers on your way out, or you could just drop it in the offering uh, basket. Amen. Let's give this young man a hand. Thank you, bro. Amen. Thank you. Amen. 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 Um, it's um, wow time flies. It's offering time. Is it offering time? Is it offering time already? Amen. It's offering time. Um, this is our greatest opportunity to worship God in giving. One of the greatest privileges we have is to give back. We 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 ask God. God gives us. God blesses us, and God does for us things beyond what we ask him to do but the Lord requires to whom much is given much is required when God blesses us it is not just for us to hold and for us to keep but also for us to bless him back um, this is a wonderful opportunity to to be obedient uh, and to be a blessing to God as he has given us as we give God our tithe our offering that belongs to him Many of you have already done that during this week, have come by and have dropped your tithe off or have mailed it in. Um, we praise God for your faithfulness, your obedience, and also your trust uh, in God. Uh, for those who would like to use the Givelify, you can go on the Givelify app yeah. right now. If you're watching, you can go on Givelify and you can use the Givelify app as well. It is secure, it is safe. Uh, as well and you can um, give offering through Givelify as well if not there are envelopes in front of you or it should be envelopes in front of you you can use those envelopes and fill them out and as you fill them out hold on to them until the end of the service and at the end of the service uh, as we transition after the benediction there are offering um, baskets or offering uh, boxes on both sides of the exit both sides of the aisle and you can just drop them in uh, right there as well. Let's pray. Grace is God, our Father. We bless you today. And we thank you, oh God, for your blessing and how you bless us. Lord, it is you who supply seed to the sower. We have what we have because you gave it to us. And Lord God, we are stewards over what we have. And what we have really belongs to you. It doesn't really belong to us. So therefore, Lord, we cannot just give, but we give back. Bless, oh God, every hand, every father. We ask, oh God, that you would do it for your glory and for the edifying of your glory and for the building up of your kingdom on this earth. In the name yes, of Jesus, we pray. And the people of God say amen and amen.
each door to whatever seems to be be your mountain just have How many of you know the Lord will answer when you pray? Come on, let's give God praise. How many of you know he will answer? Yes, he will. He will answer the prayer when you pray. If you don't pray, then he won't know. But if you pray, he will answer. Come on, let's give God praise this morning. Come on, encourage yourself. Encourage yourself. Encourage yourself. He will, he will. Come on, let the redeem of the Lord say so. 
those whom God has redeemed out of the hands of the enemy ought to say so. Come on, he inhabits the praises of his people. Come on, you all encourage yourself this morning. That's why you came to church. That's why you got up. That's why you got dressed. That's why you drove all the way here. Come on, encourage yourself. God just spoke to you in that song. That was your confirmation that he will answer prayer. That was your confirmation this morning. Amen. That he will answer prayer. The grace of God, our Father, we bless you for being a prayer answering God. You have answered many prayers, and there are still some to answer. We thank you for the privilege to pray, Lord God, to come to you with our burdens. And I share with you our joys as well. And we thank you, O oh Lord, for representing yourself in a powerful way. God, thank you for this word, this choir, just already confirming, God, and blessing us, God, that you answer prayers. God, we pray even now that you would bless us in your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Look at somebody and tell them he will answer prayers. Come on. Encourage somebody. Encourage somebody. Somebody need to hear that. Come on. Tell somebody. Somebody need to hear that. Come on. Fret not thyself. The Lord will answer your prayer. Amen. He may not show up when you want him to. But the Lord will answer. He will answer your prayer. Let's bless this choir this morning. Amen. 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 You all look so wonderful this morning as I look out and see a sea of red. Amen. As we celebrate uh, this month, uh, Black Heritage Month, but also we celebrate as well. Um, heart month as well and immediately after the service downstairs if you would like um, um, our health ministry is doing fr um, uh, free um, blood pressure checks uh, downstairs so immediately after the service if you want to know um, what your blood pressure is amen you can go downstairs and have a check for free and we want you to please go down there, amen. <clears throat> please go down there and let them know uh, um, that you want your blood pressure uh, checked, amen. And we praise, let's give our health ministry, uh, thank God for them, amen. They love what they do, amen, for the benefit uh, of other, other people. Um, we celebrated Wednesday was the first day of the Lenten season. This is my time of the year. I'm like, I'm like, 10 children at Christmas uh, this time of year amen this is my joy this time of year to fast and to be able to seek the Lord's face um, and uh, and just find my place find my will um, in him and I pray that you are doing the same thing during this Lenten season and uh, I pray that you will spend time you know, and that song was, was basically a a, a, a segue into what I really want to say. Um, the Lenten season is all about prayer. Now I know, well, Pastor, I pray all the time. I'm not questioning that, but I can guarantee you most of your prayers you spend praying for other people. I bet you that. How much time do we really spend praying for ourselves? I mean, for ourselves. Um, it's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. So the Lenten season is a wonderful time to fast, turn down your plates, um, and get into the scriptures, uh, find a reading plan if you have one, um, if you don't have one, and spend time in prayer and in fasting. And one thing we do know, there are some strongholds in all of our lives that can only be broken through prayer and fasting. Now, I know that may sound old fashioned for some, and I know we save that for the holiness church. 
but amen but we are a holiness church without holiness the bible says no man will see the lord amen holy is nothing but living right amen amen and so it's an opportunity for us uh, to get closer to god and and discover those things uh within us that may be hindering our prayers from being answered um that may be hindering uh, others um from seeing jesus in us uh it could be just a multiplicity of things but this is the hour and day and time so i pray that you would you would do uh, that during this lenten season and take it very seriously amen Amen. Matthew chapter 4, I'm going to revisit a text that I preached Wednesday here at noonday um, that just won't let me go. Uh, Matthew 4. Matthew 4. To our virtual audience, good morning. For those who are watching virtually around the world and across the world. Praise God for you uh, this morning. If you have it, say amen. amen. I'm going to read those first four verses. Matthew chapter 4, the New International Version. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, look at him and tell him he was hungry. The tempter came to him. And said, if you are the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. You may be seated. Amen. Then Jesus was led by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And down to verse four. It is written, Jesus answered, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. I just want to preach this morning from, from the subject, two words, why not? Amen. Why not? Church, it was it was the it was the um, predestined, if I could say, the predestined move uh, of God uh, in Christ uh, that He would find Himself somewhat in the predicament that we just read that He was in, uh, the temptation of Jesus. Is often sometimes read, misread, and sometimes misinterpreted. When we read Matthew 4, when we read even Luke's uh, gospel, I think Luke's 4 start off with the same thing, um, referring to um, Jesus and during his, his walk to Calvary, um, knowing that in a few days that he himself was going to be um, crucified and uh, for the sins of the world. Um, we know that um, during this walk uh, toward Calvary, um, we read and we know where Jesus uh, knew that this was coming and, and uh, some may say he lived in regret. I challenge that, but that's another text. I, I just do know that the road he was on, I will guarantee you, if nothing else, in flesh, it was it was burdensome to him. Um, um, it's 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 something about knowing that uh, that your days are numbered, and which our days are numbered, and that's why the word reminds us that we ought to apply our hearts unto wisdom. Jesus knew his days were numbered. He knew uh, what was up ahead of him. And as he prepared for that, shortly after his baptism, 
uh, from, in, from uh, John, the, uh, the Baptist who baptized him, uh, it was Jesus and, uh, who knew that in his, in his walk to Calvary uh, that he has to first start with preparing for that journey. Any, any, listen, any, any journey with God always starts with preparation. You cannot go with God without preparing to go with God. Uh, you cannot go to the next level with God if you do not prepare now for the level that God is taking you to. Um, there is no such thing as just arriving to a level and God just drop you off right there, amen, and didn't just leave you and you handle it from there. I, I'm a believer, I'm a total believer from my own experience, my own walk with God and my own faith. I truly believe that any level with God starts with preparation. It starts with preparation. It, it starts with acknowledging that God is, first of all, God is uh, uh, dealing with you. And then it starts off next, not only uh, realizing that God is dealing with you, but it also lets you know that if God is dealing with me, then God is preparing me to do something, to go places I've never been before, and to do something I've never done before. Jesus never died before. Amen, somebody. That's why the word reminds us in Hebrews that he only died once, amen. And so to, for him to come down to, would be to crucify him afresh, which means he only needed to die one time, amen, and I'm glad of that. He only needed to die one time and to only raise from the grave just one time. Jesus was preparing himself for those days to come, but most of all for the moment, amen, that um, others may say it was a life of a possible regret. I'm convinced that not only Jesus uh, uh, responded this way, but I'm kind of looking at how that sometimes what God wants us to recognize sometimes is really right, really before us. Um, sometimes we see stuff or we see things uh, other than what God is already have put in front of us. Um, Jesus, uh, the Bible declares, full of the Holy Spirit, had left Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil or the tempter. He ate nothing during those days, and at the end of them, at the end of his fast, like anyone else, he was hungry. The devil said to him, if you are the Son of God, Tell, the, tell this stone to become bread. Jesus answered, it is written that man shall not live on bread alone. Letting the devil know that, uh, that, that I know and I understand what your job is and I know that you are the tempter, I understand that. Uh, but I have a mission to complete. And I have something that I must do, not just for my father, but something I must do for, the, for a generation that is yet to be born. Um, and so therefore he challenged him. He challenged him to turn uh, the stones into bread. And of course we know, uh, thank God, that we had a Christ who had some word in him. Which means, amen, that if you're ever going to rebuke the devil, it won't be done cussing him out. Look at somebody tell him, amen. Amen. I'm going to tell you, you can tell devils off all you want. I can tell you right now, they'll, they'll tell you right back off. You can cuss them out and they'll cuss you right back. Amen. Because cussing and, and, and fussing don't kill devils. What kill devils is word, amen. And if you don't have no word, then guess what? You cannot kill devils. You have to have some word in you. But Jesus had some word and Jesus knew not how, he just not only how to use it, 
but he knew what was appropriate to use at the time. And when he responded back to Satan, he responded back to Satan with word. In fact, uh, the word he responded back with was a word that was written in Deuteronomy 8 and 3. He, he basically knew the scriptures and that they were in him. And by them being in him, he knew how to rebuke Satan, amen, at least for that moment, because if you keep reading, you'll see what Satan came back to other times, amen. And then finally, at the end, the Bible declares that Satan left, left him, and then it was only for a season. Satan never leaves us alone, church. He will never leave us alone in this life. In fact, it is his, it is his job, amen, to never leave us alone. It is, it is what he do. It is who he is. It is his character. And that is what he will do up until the day that Christ comes for his bride. And so when I questioned, when I read and I looked, I thought about this is the Lenten season. This is a wonderful time for us to fast and pray. But pastor, every time you say fast and pray for Lent, I do it. But pastor, every time you tell us to fast and pray for Lent, pastor, something always comes up while I am fasting. Some temptation always, amen, is always at me when I try to fast, when I try to turn down my plate, when I try to pray. It's always something, something, and something. Well, you have to remember that is the job job of your adversary that is the job of your adversary he is the prince of the air that is what his character is it is what he does it is his job to discourage you to disappoint you to try to keep you a man from the blessings that God has for you and so the question or the point I want to make instead of asking yourself why me why this why now sometimes we have to ask ourselves why not Amen, somebody. We have to ask ourselves why not. Because, because we are in Christ, we are not exempted, amen, from the temptations of this world. We are not exempt, amen, from the curses that are thrown. We are not exempt, amen, from Satan uh, finding out who we are, what our plans are. Because when things are announced and put in the air, it's when Satan goes into action. If you don't believe me, come here, Joseph. Joseph was fine until he opened his mouth. And told his brothers, amen, what God was doing within him. And yet his brothers, amen, couldn't handle it. And yet wanted to rid themselves of their brother. But praise be to God, God comes in the picture somewhere along the line here. And picks Joseph up and makes him the prime minister of agriculture in Egypt. Amen. But God, you got to remember that, that whenever you have plans to do something for God, Amen. As soon as you put it out of your mouth, as soon as you speak it in that atmosphere, Satan heard what you said. When you're at the altar praying, he hears. When you're in the house discussing with your wife or your spouse plans that y'all plan on doing for the future, he hears. When you tell others what you believe God is doing in your life, he hears. When you pray out loud, he hears. Whenever words are spoken out of your mouth, Satan hears. And Satan then knows how to uh, how or begin to put a scheme or a plan together to disrupt or to thwart every plan that you have. But look at somebody, tell them not so. Not so. This is going to be the Lenten season for me that it just ain't going to happen. I believe God is going to do something in my life he's never done. I believe God is going to take me somewhere I've never been. I believe God is going to let me see some stuff in the spiritual and the supernatural I've never seen. I believe God's going to have me around people I've never been around. I believe God's going to open doors he's never opened. I believe God's going to set me in that place I've never set. I believe God. I believe God. I I believe God, I believe God. And if it can happen to others, then why not can it happen to me? My brothers and sisters, as I move on, I definitely want us to remember that during this Lenten season, it is important. It is high 
highly important that we get close to Jesus than ever we than we ever have before. And that's the basic purpose of the Lenten season to create space in the middle of life's responsibilities to appreciate what's always been there all the time which is God's presence. God's presence has been with us all the time. And I know sometimes it seems like the Lord's presence is not with us. I know sometimes it seems like God is not there. I know it seems like sometimes that God doesn't hear my cry, hear my plea, hear my prayer, hear my call, see my tears. I know sometimes it seems like the presence of God is not there. But I've come to tell you that I know clouds may gather and the sun may, may be obscured but the sun is always shining clouds don't last forever clouds are not there every day there is a ray of hope peeking through the cloud amen for you and for me God's presence is always with us but let is a 40-day period leading up to the resurrection Sunday based on Jesus 40 days in the wilderness Lent is also a tool that can help you become more aware of God's voice and his sacrificial love let me say this again that the purpose of Lent isn't a man to better your life let me say that again the purpose of Lent isn't to better your life, but the purpose of Lent is to center your life on what really matters most. And let me, what really matters most is really not really just you. What really matters most is not me. What really matters most is really not your agenda. What really matters most is not your possessions. What really, hear me, what really matters most is God. And God wants us during the Lenten season to center our, our life around him. That's why Jesus, uh, the song says, Jesus, you're the center of my, you got it, the center of my joy. All that's good and perfect comes from you because if Jesus is the center of our life, then that makes him primary in our life and not secondary in our life. Now, here's the matter what Jesus said. Jesus can be everything to me. He can be all things. He can be anything. Let me tell you, I agree and I disagree. Let me tell you why I disagree. One, as one writer says, uh, that Jesus, there is, there is something Jesus cannot be in your life. Jesus cannot be second in your life. Jesus has to be the center of your life. Everything centers around him. There is nothing that does not center around him. Everything centers around him. He is the cause of everything. He is God. He is in control of everything. He is in the center of everything. There is nothing that evolves around God that God is not not in control of and can I go here even the principalities a man that try a man to work opposite in your life let me tell you something God don't you ever think God ain't in control God is always in control even when it looks like he's not in control even when the plane look like it's crashing amen somebody in your life God still has the power amen to put it back on course he's always in the center of everything that goes on in your life that's why there is no secret when it comes to God there is nothing God cannot do and there is no door God cannot open and there is no sickness God cannot heal and there is no revelation that God cannot reveal and there is no power that God cannot include that let me tell you we serve our God 
if he can get in the center of your life then God got you but he has to be in the center that's what the Lenten season is all about. The Lenten season, don't get it confused, don't get it twisted. It's not about to make you better. Let me tell you something, the word of God is going to make you better anyhow. But God says, no, nah, I'm not, I'm not, I didn't come in your life to make you better. I come in your life so that you can recognize that I am the center of your life. Come here, Moses, who do I tell Pharaoh sent me? You tell Pharaoh I am that I am sent you. Well, who is I am? Moses, I'll be whatever you need me to be when it's time for me to be it that's what i'll be that's who i am i'm your bridge over troubled waters that's i can get you there i'll be your bread in a starving land i'll get you there too amen i'll be your lawyer in the courtroom if that's what you need me to be i'll be there too i'll be your way out of no way i'll be there too you let him know i am that i am have sent you in other words moses you keep me in the center and you and i gonna get some stuff done that's what the Lenten season is all about. So it raises the question, it raises the question how God wants us to live during the Lenten season. And what would be the purpose of me fasting? Why should I fast? Because I just you just said, Pastor, the purpose of Lent isn't uh, isn't uh, to, to better my life, uh, uh, and, but to keep God in the center of my life. Then the one who made you, the one who died for you, the one, amen, and one of the ways you do this is through practicing spiritual habits he tells uh, jesus tells satan that he is when he tries to get him to say, uh, jesus I, I know you're hungry and and i know you just came off this 40 day fast i know you just came off of it because i i watched you and i know um i'm a spiritual being and i know right now flesh wise jesus i know you hungry i know you are hungry i know that you want something to eat and so here it is i know whenever you are hungry you are vulnerable I know that you are vulnerable. And so I know you are hungry. So why don't you take these stones here, one of these stones, or this matter of fact, he says this stone, which means evidently there was one particular one he had to have been looking at when he said this stone. Take this stone and turn it into bread. Won't you do that? And then that'll settle your hunger pains. But then Jesus responds back to him with the word says. And that the word reminded him that the word he told uh, Satan that in his word that first of all he said it is written and, and he would not have known it was written unless he had read it you pull that down doing the Sunday school lesson Jesus would not have known what the word said that it was written unless he would have read it himself that's the only way you can quote something is if you read it. It is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Here's what intrigued me with this. Anytime you are tempted of the enemy, you have to remind yourself that we can live off of God's word. Because God's word is bread. The, the, bread in the Bible represents fulfillment. But let me give me a good, good example. Um, when, uh, in Old Testament, when, uh, when, when, uh, when, uh, when the Hebrews would go into the temple, the, the, the priest had to uh, prepare bread fresh bread and they would place the bread As a matter of fact it was 12 loaves of bread every loaf represented the 12 tribes and they would take the 12 loaves and sit them outside of the temple they would do that because um and then they had to they had to change it every day in other words they couldn't just put the 12 loaves of bread there and leave them there for tomorrow <coughs> or the next day uh Every day, a priest would come and put fresh bread there. 
symbolizing that God's fulfillment in, in, is in him and him only. I, what got me was they changed it every day. Why didn't they just let it stay there like we do until the date expired? Oh, you know we ate some expired bread, amen, back in the day. You, 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 didn't fix a, you didn't fix a sandwich back in the day and it had mold on it? Did you throw away the bread? No, I'm going to tell you what you did. <laughs> Can I see some mold people that picked some mold off some bread before? Yeah, I know we bougie now. Amen. We don't do that now. Amen. Oh, no. That might kill us. But they would change the bread and put fresh bread out, signifying that the freshness of the fresh word of God is all you will ever need for your fulfillment in life. You didn't get that. That's what you need, especially during the Lenten season, is a fresh word. You need fresh bread. And God's fulfillment will be the best thing that ever took place in your life. God's word is fulfillment. And Jesus was bread himself. He was the living bread, amen, as well as the living water that quenched thirst. But he was the living bread. Jesus was the fulfillment, amen, of a new covenant. He was the fulfillment. He didn't come to do away with the with, uh, with the law he said that but he came to what fulfill the law Jesus was the law of fulfillment within himself which simply means because he was the fulfillment of life then simply he wants to be the fulfillment in our life if you get Jesus you got fulfillment do I have a witness in here when I say fulfillment you won't need so much in life you take people who need so much in life gotta have this need that never get enough of stuff never get enough of things, got to always accumulate, got to always have, need a new man, need a new woman all the time, got to be, got to have, got to have. That, that's somebody whose life is not fulfilled. But when you get Jesus in your life, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, when you get Jesus in your life, he is the fulfillment and all the fulfillment of the Godhead you will ever need. You get Jesus, you got everything. Do I have a half a witness in here? He is the fulfillment. He is the bread. But what got me was that the text happens, it's funny how it starts off. Jesus is just, has just left from being baptized. He has just left from being baptized. And so now when you start off in chapter 4, he's tested in the wilderness. It starts off with then. And, and, and then Jesus was led. But whenever stuff start off with then, it is a, it is a, it is a, it is a term of, of, of transfer. When you say then, it transfer the whole, the whole subject of something else. Now, it says then Jesus was led, which simply means that whenever you say then, it is an opportunity of transport or transfer. And whenever there is a transfer of place, there's also a transfer of mind. H hear me. Uh, the transfer, it, it would be like this. It would be like if I asked you where you're going, you say, well, pastor, I am, uh, I'm going to uh, get some gas, then I'm going to Walmart. Amen. The transfer, I'm going to get some gas, then I'm going to Walmart. But here's, here's what happens. When you went to get the gas, that you had one mindset when you were there. That was to get some gas and pay for the gas, and then, then you go to your next destination. But when you get to your next destination, your mind is not on gas. That was the last destination, that was the last spot. Your mind now is on wherever your transfer, wherever your place is of where you are bodily. Which simply meant that when it says, then Jesus, Jesus simply realized that this, that I was back there with John the Baptist. Yes, I did get baptized back there and my mind was on my baptism. My mind was on 
what it needed to be on back then but now but now then but now I am in another place now I am in a place now where I have to fast and pray and talk to my father to get prepared here we go to uh, prepare for a journey I've yet to be on here it is whenever there is a then your mind is on the then and your mind is wherever you are at the time here it is this is what happened with Israel that's why when uh, they were uh, they were in the wilderness the text says that, that God led him by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted here it is this is not the first temptation we read about wilderness temptation we read about that in Exodus when Egypt uh, when the Hebrews left Israelites left out of the flesh pots of Egypt here they are now in the wilderness well the wilderness is a place amen where it is the wilderness is a place where it is inhabitable you cannot live there it could be either in a dry desert it could be a man uh, out uh, 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 in the mountains it could be uh, in the middle of the of a, of a river of a, a river it, it's a place where it is inhabitable for you to live and so therefore now here's Israel there in the wilderness and yet they tell Moses, Moses, uh, we are hungry. Uh, you brought us out here to die. Was there not enough? Uh, was there not enough graves in Egypt? At least in Egypt, we had this to eat. We had leeks. We had melons and onions. All that stuff they gave them gas. Amen. They, that, that was all they could remember that they had. And so, therefore, now they are challenging Moses uh, to get them something to eat better. That they wanted to go back to eating meat. Isn't it funny how? before the then of the transfer of where God is taking you for some reason whenever you get in a bind isn't it something when God is challenging you to go forward on a journey you've never been to a place you've never seen to walk on dirt you never walked on isn't it funny amen when your faith start falling amen for some reason your mind digress back amen to what you had and the way things were before let me tell you that's a trick of the devil to get your mind to go back to go my to digress and go backwards it's a trick of the devil to get your mind to go back how things were let me tell you something I understand that because one you got to realize that what happened then was then God is moving you somewhere else there has to be a then now in your life there has to be a then a transfer of place and a transfer of mind let this mind be in in you that was also in Christ Jesus where God is taking you you need another whole mindset look at somebody tell me, you got to think differently what, come on, what God is doing in your life now, it requires a different mind. It don't require the mind you had pre-COVID. It requires a different mind. Where God is taking you right now, it requires a different mind. What God is doing, it requires a different mind. You got to think differently now. Do I have a witness? You got to digest God's word in your life differently now. You got to pray differently now. In fact, you got to ask God for different things now I hope I ain't losing somebody this morning I'm trying to help us to get to places we've never been before and I know it is uncomfortable when God does certain things let me tell you if nothing else I can't speak for nobody but Jerome Lee on this one and maybe somebody will hold up their hand and testify with me but let me tell you something I hate to say this but I'm going to say it COVID was one of the best things that could have happened amen in my life now, I didn't say catching COVID was. <laughs> no, no. I'm talking about, I'm talking about what the, the era, the time, the space, the era in which we live. COVID, COVID has done some nice things. Now, Pastor, I don't see it now. I don't see what COVID has done because COVID has killed people. It sure has. Pastor, I don't see what COVID has done because COVID has disrupted my life. It sure did. But let me tell you what COVID did to me. It did the same thing for you. It did for me. It disrupted my life too. But let me tell you something. What COVID did was made me turn to God. It made me read more. It made me study more. It made me trust more. In fact, it took me to a place I have never been in my life. And now that it is behind me, then 
amen now my whole mindset is totally different than it was prior to COVID took some of us to another level. Do I have a half a witness in here? Come on, talk to me somebody. COVID has took some of us to another whole level. But guess what? We also left some folk behind because some folks still ain't got past COVID. You can hear it in they talk. They ain't got past COVID. They have not gotten past COVID whatsoever. But God is ahead and God is moving on. And let me tell you, his truth is marching on. God's truth cannot be stopped. God's progression can, uh, cannot be stopped. He, he is about progress. He's moving his church to where he wants his church to be. And I'm going along for the ride. Jesus answered him, or he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. We read it to be tempted, but it's originally to be tested. Yeah. I told you before, Satan tempts, but God tests. Praise God. Praise God. If I was you, I'd write that down. You're going to need that one day. We blame too much stuff on God. But at the same time, we, bring, we, we, we blame too much stuff on Satan. Um, I know Philip Wilson said the devil made me do it, but did he? My goodness. All right. <laughs> or is that something you wanted to do all along? James said a man is tempted when he's drawn away by his own lust. And he gives in to that lust. And when he gives in to that lust, it brings forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, brings forth death. Everybody don't like chocolate cake. Just in case somebody pointing out a particular sin, that you don't do. What about the ones you do? See, we can point, we can, we can always point out the sin of the people. And particularly when it's not our sin. Well, their sin ain't your sin. They like chocolate cake. You like apple pie. Yeah, that's what it is. You like salt, they like sugar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They like barbecue chips. You playing Jane. You like playing. Everybody's temptation ain't the same. Jesus was tempted with a stone. How do you tempt somebody with a stone? How do you, how do you, how do you tempt somebody with a stone? and to turn it into bread and eat it at that. Jesus was tempted, but he was tested. And in his tests, he pulled out of him word. It is written, man shall not live. On bread alone, say, probably short that say, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Secondly, as I close with this, I only had a two point sermon today. I, I get you out in time, go home, watch a Western. <laughs> uh, we can, we can live, listen, we can live through temptation. Can, let me add this to it. At least for 40 days. Amen. 40 days of fasting and praying. Jesus got through the temptation. When we read about this part here, he's gotten through the temptation. He's gotten through the 40 days. 
It wasn't like he didn't get through. He got through the 40 days. But Jesus, what did it take for you to get through the 40 days? Well, what it took for him to get through the 40 days is the same thing it took for him to rebuke Satan by turning stones into bread. It was going to take word and his father in heaven. Let me help somebody who said, well, pastor, I never fasted and, 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 and 40 days is a lot. Let me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me just quote us real quick. Pastor, I, 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 40 days is a lot for me to fast. I, you know, I, I'm on medicines and um, you know, I, got, I got my insulin and you know, I'm on blood pressure pills. I got pills to get up. I got pills to, to, go, to get down. I got pills, pastor, I got to take to remind me to take the pills I supposed to take. <laughs> You know, pastor, I got pills, I got pills, I, and I, I got to do, I got to take, and, and, and pastor, and, and 40 days, I don't know if I can handle it for 40 days, you know, the doctor said, and, the, and, and, and I trust me, I get it. I'm not telling you don't take your medicine. Please, we would have a major problem if you did that. I'm not a medical doctor in that sense. Amen. And so, and so how, how, how did Jesus get through 40 days? And, and how in the world can I fast for 40 days? And Lord, you know how hard it is for me to turn down pork chops? You know? <laughs> which is a contributor to your blood pressure, which is why you're taking that pill. Hello. Uh, you know how hard for me to, it is for me to turn down ice cream. Uh, you know, Jesus, I love, you don't know, the pastor, I just love peace cobbler. I'm, I'm addicted to peace cobbler. I, I need to go to rehab, but Lord, I, I just got to have it. And, and, uh, and, 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 I, and I, Lord, I just got to have these pastas and these starches. And I just, I just love, I love spaghetti and I, I love lasagna and I love ziti. I, I love white rice. And I, I love all these starches. And, which, which is again contributed to your um, to your type two diabetes, amen, uh, and that's why you're taking that insulin. And but Jesus, uh, but Pastor, you just don't know how hard it is for me to fast. Let, well, 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 hold it. Let me say this: What's important? What you want God to do, or a pork chop sandwich? I mean, it's your way, you weigh it out. Your deliverance, amen. Fried chicken skin. <laughs> what you want God to do? It depends, you, I mean, God ain't gonna make us do nothing. The choice is up to us. Uh, you, you want some word, you want to grow in him, you want some power, or you'd rather have the banana pudding. It's, it's, to me, it's simple. I don't have to have the banana pudding. I just don't. Let me say this. At least for 40 days. I mean, he ain't telling me to get rid of it forever. For 40 days. Come on, talk. Come on. I'm trying to help somebody. You can't go without a pork chop sandwich for 40 days? That's a, that right there proves you need to be delivered. For 40 days. Jesus goes through this agony of not eating. The Bible says he ate nothing. Now, in him not eating, every day, every day, his body was reminding him, we got to eat. But at the same time, his spirit was reminding him, no. And there's going to always be a war in your members. Here it is between yes and no. Do I have a half a witness in here? It's going to always be a war going on in your members between yes and no. Come here, Paul. Paul said, let me tell you, I went through that. Paul dealt with it in Romans 7. I think 6, Romans 7. He dealt with that. Paul says, let me tell you something. There was a war going on in my members. What I say I won't going to do, I find myself doing it. What I say I'm going to do, I find myself not doing it doing it. Paul said there's a war going on in my members. There is a battle between yes 
and no. The flesh, uh, the spirit is willing, but my flesh is weak. Paul says, Lord, there's so much war going on in my members. He says, I had to ask God the question, who shall deliver me from this body of death? But then Paul dips his pen in the ink of inspiration and he says, I thank God for Christ Jesus. In other words, Paul know that if I walk with God and talk with God and stay close with God, he, my yes will overshadow my no. And all I'm saying in my closing is that let God bless you. And why not let God be the one that bless you? Why not you be the one that let God work in your life so that your yes, so that your no's can become some yes. Because when you say yes to God, do have a witness in here. Let me tell you, God is going to bless your life. Whenever you say yes to God, God is going to do stuff you didn't expect God to do. Whenever you say yes to God, God is going to use you to do great things. Whenever you say yes to God, God is going to do some work on the inside of you. That's going to show on the outside of you. And folk will know that you've been with Jesus. Do I have a witness in here? And when folk see that you've been with Jesus, they'll always want to be around you. Because whenever you've been with Jesus, it shows on the outside because there's power to get some stuff done. Whenever you've been with Jesus, it'll show on the outside because on the outside, they'll see it in your walk, they'll hear it in your talk, and they'll feel it in your words. Whenever you've been with Jesus, all it takes to tell somebody is a yes. Say yes to Jesus. Say yes to his will. And say yes to his way. Say yes, Lord. Say yes, Lord. Let us stand. Why not? I know fasting is not something we do out of the norm. But let me tell you what fasting really is. It is all it really is is a discipline. That's all fasting is. It is it is it is a discipline that the the, the Christian believer the follower of Jesus Christ has to discipline his or herself to make up in their mind, I want this. Hallelujah. Why do I want it? Hallelujah. Because you need it. Why do I need it? Because the journey Hallelujah. where God is trying to get you to is going to take more than it took to get you. It's not going to be the same, rather, but it took to get you where you are. Fasting, let me tell you this from my own experience. If I could share this. Listen, fasting, as you, especially when you start getting into it, fasting Hallelujah. automatically attracts Satan. Hallelujah. As if he's not attracted to you enough. <laughs> Let me tell you why. Hallelujah. Because the closer you get to coming out of your fast, the greater the temptation Hallelujah. becomes. Let me say this, I don't believe, I do not believe, that Satan just suddenly showed up in Jesus and tempted him at the end of his fast. I just don't believe Satan works that way. I truly believe he was tempting him all along during yeah. the fast. Yeah. Because tempting him through the, through, through the fast is what he does. He is a tempter. I'm sure the first week into that fast, I'm sure Satan, somewhere along the line, tried to tempt him with something. We just don't read about it. And I'm not trying to presuppose a text because that's dangerous in putting presuppositions in a text, and I learned that. However, when you know the nature of the beast, you would know that the beast, by nature, is a tempter. That's who he is. That is what he does. I do not believe he just waited for 40 days, clicked his fingers on the desk, and waited for Jesus to finish. I do believe there was a temptation every day. Every day. But if finally, after those 40 days, I believe he figured he really had them. But Jesus had a mission. And for those of us 
who want to get through this Lenten season, I'm challenging you, as well as my own self, to fast. Hallelujah. Find something in your life and in your spirit worth fasting for. Don't just fast because it's the Lenten season. That's not a good reason because, just because it's Lenten season. No. Find a purpose to fast for. In fact, if you could just close your eyes just for one minute. I'm going to open the doors of the church. But just close your, mind, close your eyes just for one minute. And I, I want you to just think of that one thing. Just think of that one thing in your life right now. that's worth fasting for and whatever it is that one thing give it to God right now and make a commitment to God that's what I'm going to fast for tired of taking medicines let me tell you I know some I know some stories I don't have time to tell it all I know some stories I've heard them I know people who were prescribed certain medicines and pills in their life, trusted God. Yes, God. I haven't had one told me that the, when the doctor prescribed that pill, they said to themselves right then and there, I'm not taking that. And they needed it. But they made a decision to fast and pray and talk to God and, and change their lifestyle too that they never had to take that pill and to this day they're not on it what is the one thing that you need God to do my brother my sister maybe there's somebody here who have come who want to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior this is a wonderful time for you my brother my sister maybe you don't have a church home listen you, you you need a church home you need a church whether it be St. James or somewhere you would like to be you need a church home you cannot afford this day and time and hour to be without a church home you need a pastor you need a spiritual leader you need someone that you can covenant with you need fellowship with other believers who are strong in the faith to pray with and pray for you 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 have to have this in your life if all of these things are absent in your life your life is not fulfilled it doesn't matter I don't care who it is people were never meant to be fulfillment in your life that's why people are messed up because they allow people to or they thought people were going to bring fulfillment to their life and they got let down. Jesus says, I want to be your bread. In me, he says, is the fulfillment of the Godhead bodily. Which simply means he is God. Let him in your life. Now we can begin with a fulfillment and work on that. Candidate for baptism, Christian experience, why don't you come? You've never accepted Christ, you've never been baptized. Listen, this is the time and hour to do that. This is your time, this is your day. Why don't you come up the aisle? Somebody will walk with you, you don't have to come by yourself. Pastor, I, I'm already a Christian, I just, I don't have a church home. We offer you Jesus. This is a wonderful time for you to come. Hallelujah. And be a part of St. James. Or be a part of the church, you tell us where you want to go. But, but do come. Christian experience. Rededication. Amen. The word of God has gone forth and the call to discipleship has been made. We want to pray. I definitely want to pray. Um, let us look to the Lord. Grace is gone, our Father. We bless you and we thank you, O God, for being God. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for Jesus and sending Jesus in our life. Lord, as he come to be the fulfillment in us all, Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, that he come to shed his blood on Calvary's cross. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we ask, oh God, that you would search this house. 
God, somebody today, Heavenly Father, need to trust you. Somebody need you to be the fulfillment that you came to be in their life. And Lord, right now we ask in the name of Jesus that you would move in a mighty way in our life. This is the Lenten season. This is a new season. It is season. And season is always temporary. Lord, in this season, there are things we need you to do that we cannot do. We're reminded of those disciples who could not cast that demon out of that boy. But when the disciples asked Jesus how come his disciples couldn't do it, he told them that this kind, this kind, cometh out but by prayer. Lord, we ask that in the name of Jesus, Lord, there are some strongholds, there are some besetting sins. Heavenly Father, that hold us strong and don't want to let us go. But Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come to you with a spirit to pray and to fast, to turn down our plates, O oh God, in this Lenten season, that we will walk with you and hear your voice, that you would be a mighty deliverer to us, that you will not just make us better. You didn't come to make us better, Heavenly Father. Lord, but you came to fulfill. And Lord, we pray that in the name of Jesus, that you would move not by might nor by power, but by your spirit, says the Lord of hosts. God, move in this sanctuary. Move to those who are watching um, this morning. Move in a mighty way, oh God. We need you, God, to shake our cages. We need you to rattle our cages and to shake our dungeons, Heavenly Father, until all the chains fall off. God, we need your power. We need your word and spirit to do what we cannot do. Lord, we know that you are a healer. We know, God, that you can heal. We know, God, that you have healed. And we know, God, that you will heal. God, and we know, God, that you will, there is no good thing when you withhold from those whose walk is upright. Lord, you said we delight ourselves in you, God, that you will give us the desires of our heart. Oh, God, help us, God, during this Lenten season. Help us in a mighty way, oh, God. Help us to focus on ourselves. Help us to see in ourselves room for improvement. Help us to see in ourselves that we can do better. We can think better. We can talk better. That we can walk better. And that we will be better. Lord, let us see within ourselves the hope of Jesus Christ. Let us see within ourselves, Heavenly Father, that we are already healed. Let us see within ourselves that we can can walk in victory let us see within ourselves that we are somebody in Jesus Christ Lord we thank you and we bless you God prepare us in a mighty way for that which we have not seen Lord God we are excited of what you're gonna do with us what you're gonna do in us what you will do through us Lord God we are excited greater of you that is in us that is you that is in that world out there Lord, we, uh, we thank you. We lift up those, Heavenly Father, who are on beds of affliction. Pray for those who've had strokes. We pray in the name of Jesus. We pray for those whose blood pressure, for some reason, cannot be under control. We pray for somebody's diabetes that cannot be un, uh, in, uh, who's under control. God, we pray that in the name of Jesus, God, that you would bless somebody's mind right now, oh God. So much is going on with us, but Lord, you are in control of it all. And we give ourselves away so you can use us. We give ourselves away. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Bless my brother behind me, in front of me. Bless my sister beside me. Lord God, bless them in a mighty way. In Jesus' name, we pray. And the people of God say amen. Amen and amen let us prepare for our benediction for those who would love to have their blood pressure checked please you can just go right downstairs amen and they will check that for you uh for free uh as well please do not forget on your way out our offering boxes at both doors for our guest card you can just drop that as well in the box uh as well let us look to the lord and please do not forget your gleaners if you do not have them uh, there should be some on the table Please get your gleaners. Please don't leave without them and turn them in on Easter Sunday. And now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before his presence with exceeding and great joy to the only wise God our Savior be glory, majesty, dominion, and power henceforth and forever. And the people of God say amen. Come on, amen and amen. Enjoy your week.
time, what a time, what a time. Did not you enjoy that word on today? I thank you for watching us today and thank you for in-person worship today. Please don't forget to join us 7 o'clock Tuesday, 12 o'clock Wednesday for our Bible study. And I pray you've had a wonderful week. Join us again. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.